Hi guys, welcome to another episode of Rock Bottom Airsoft. It's good to see you again. If this is your first time here, then as always, it is good to see you and I hope you're going to stick around. Okay, well, welcome to our weekend video. We're back here in the studio, <laughs> which is great. I've not got water pouring down all around me, so that's always good. <laughs> Those of you who may know who follow the channel already, I had a bit of a flood here. And that's what I'm going on about. <laughs> okay, well, what are we going to have a look at today? Well, it's a bit of a specific video. You know from the thumbnail already what it's all about. So if you're here, then it's obviously something you're hopefully interested in. Um, and maybe a replica you're considering or you already have. This is the JG Mac 10. I'll put it that way and then you can see it a bit better. Now, those of you who follow the channel will know that uh, this week, Just Gone's Airsoft Gameplay was a follow-up use of this Mac 10. We already did a video unboxing it and having a, a quick first impressions look at it. Um, and then I had a do with it in the field Sunday just gone at my home site, Tazball Airsoft, and we, uh, I had a few games with it, and I really enjoyed it, and it was really good. So what we're going to have a look at today is, is I did mention in that gameplay video that it was slightly non-standard. I mean, the whole thing is standard, the only bit I changed was the battery. Now, those of you who have one of these electric style compact machine pistols or how to push submachine guns uh, will know that battery space is exceptionally limited on them. And in the case of this JG Mac 10 and a few others, it actually runs on an AEP gearbox rather than an AEG gearbox. If you don't know the difference, basically AEP stands for Automatic Electric Pistol. So you may have seen some of the electric pistols knocking about and AEG stands for Automatic Electric Gun. Um, so yeah, they basically both work on electric gearboxes, um, running off battery power, and they are very similar, um, but the AEPs tend to have much, much smaller components, a lot more bespoke components that they're harder to work on and generally they produce less power output than an AEG which would be something like an AK or an AR replica usually a larger based replica but we are seeing some of the submachine gun categories now coming with full size AEG gearboxes such as your version 2s, your version 3 gearboxes, rather than these bespoke AEP gearboxes. And the reason the AEP gearboxes, as you can imagine, are so small, is they're designed to fit into pistols. Not normally something like this Mac 10, but such as a G series pistol, or a 1911 series, or something like that. You can get a lot of pistols that run on these tiny little AEP gearboxes so with the AEP gearbox in mind that's what can cause a problem um for for upgradability and for performance um because they usually there aren't as many options as you have for an AEG so that's that out of the way we know a little bit now about the difference between the two this JG Mic 10 runs on an AEP gearbox rather than AEG gearbox so you're restricted to start from that. It also uses a bespoke battery. Now for now, I'm gonna move the Mac 10 out of the way so you can see what I'm talking about. This is the battery that the Mac 10 comes with. It's an AEP battery. It's nickel metal hydride or NIMH, as most of you will have encountered. And as you can see, it doesn't have Mini Tamir, it doesn't have Deans, it doesn't have any of the usual connectors you'd expect to see on an Airsoft replica, or indeed on the battery you're plugging into it. Instead, it has this bespoke, one-off fitment, which is designed for ease of use. It's quite cool, just slots into the gun and that gets it working. You can't really go wrong. However, it does pose a problem for aftermarket batteries. So that is an issue that a lot of people encounter with these. So you're stuck with the NIMH, or you'd think you're stuck with the NIMH, um, which they supply. Now, this NIMH is fine. If you're happy using the standard battery that comes with it, it comes with a charger, again, which is bespoke to this particular battery, um, then that's fine. But your rate of fire is very low on full auto, and you'll find that the gearbox cycles relatively slowly. It's not that snappy on the standard gearbox. You're never going to get 
massively snappy to be fair on an AEP gearbox because you can't push them that far but it is noticeably slow cycling with this NIMH battery that comes as stock. Now like I say that's not a problem if you're happy with that then you know you can readily get hold of these batteries however if you want to do what I did and step up a bit then you are going to be looking at some sort of lithium polymer modification so that you can run a lipo battery in there and as many of you know the nearest we can get to this on a lipo battery is going to be 7.4 volts it's nowhere near to be honest guys because a lipo battery is still going to put out more current than this can even if they were both 7.4 so it ends up being quite a step up but obviously I wouldn't be looking at going 11.1 or anything like that on one of these but 7.4 volt is fine on a LiPo so that then leaves us with a problem as you can probably imagine that we have this bespoke connector that is within the housing of the replica basically on the Mac 10 you take this front housing off here and the battery just slots in and it's designed that way to be easy to use, be compact. It works, it's a good idea guys, but limit your options. So with that in mind, we need something that we can slot in there and ideally that has that type of connector on it. The other option, as some people do, is to strip down the replica and change it to something more familiar, like a Dean's an XT60 or a Tamiya connection. So you can plug any battery you want in, but obviously you're still gonna be limited to get a battery that will fit physically within this battery compartment at the top okay and on the mac 10 that's not too bad but on some of the other aeps you are going to be struggling so we then need a battery guys and we need a way of fitting said battery into our replica now that's where our first item comes up the easiest way i found of doing it with uh, with minimal fuss which is what i'm going to be showing you today just so you've got an easy way of doing it is with one of these now this i've written this down because it's a bit of a mouthful this is the tokyo marui mp7 mac 10 vz aep 7.2 volt battery conversion adapter and that's to do with polarities um, there is a difference between the automatic electric pistols and these machine pistols the ones i've mentioned there they, they, they're differing on the connector so you can't just plumb this into an AEP and vice versa um, it doesn't work that way the APs have a plug on them so we have this converter that we can use um, by Tokyo Marui so far this is the only converter I've encountered it's reasonably good quality it's just plastic guys it's got a point to slide your battery in and it's also got as you might notice the exact same connector as your standard NIMH battery which is what we're needing we need something that's going to make it easy for us just to plug a battery in there that's lipo and that is the adapter i would use now here in the uk you can get hold of one of these for between eight and ten pounds british pounds so not mega expensive i wouldn't say it was cheap for a for a lump of plastic which is what it is with a couple of contacts on but you know we, <laughs> we work with what we've got guys so you're looking at 10 pounds for one of those now obviously if you you know if you want more than one battery you don't need to buy more than one of these which i'll show you in a minute because your battery is just going to slide into this and then that slides into the replica so you'll need one of those so that it can match our nimh so we're on our way we can get the nimh out of the way so you've got your adapter now you need a, a lipo battery now more and more frequently what you'll be finding is you can buy AEP LiPo batteries. These little tiny LiPos are made for the automatic electric pistols that I mentioned earlier. And this is why we need an adapter guys. As you can see this is a 7.4 volt 20C 550 milliamp hour LiPo battery. Now this is where it is a little bit of a shame because these LiPos are a bit expensive i would say compared to much bigger capacities that you can get for similar money for example you can get one of these new pro ones here in the uk you're going to be looking at around about 15 to 20 british pounds you don't have to get the new pro ones there are other companies make them but they have to be an ap lipo with this type of connection as you can see here is a very specific connection on the end which doesn't match our converter However, that's why we have our converter. So, 
550 milliamp power yeah it's quite a small capacity quite a small battery but it's what we need to perform this conversion which i would class as the easy way of doing it you don't have to strip anything down you don't have to change anything about the replica incidentally if you're one of my viewers over in the united states in america you can still get these parts it's not a problem the tokyo marui adapter you're looking around about 12 us dollars and the lipo batteries I found those again similarly expensive. You can get those from suppliers such as Evike for around about 20 US dollars. So all in for us in the UK for the conversion, you're looking at about 30 British pounds or in the US you'd be looking at around about 30 to 32 US dollars. Not massively cheap. <laughs> For, for LiPo batteries, as I'm sure you can agree. However, once you've got the adapter, you're covered. You only need to buy these batteries. Because this battery, once you get the battery, you just slot it into your converter. Like so. And that's it, guys. That is that ready to go. That will now replace that. They're exactly the same connection at the end. So you can just slot that into your... JG Mac 10, same as you would if you were installing that. And the benefits are instant, guys. You get better trigger response, it's gonna feel snappier, it's gonna cycle faster, and you'll get a bump in your rate of fire, so the full auto fire will be better. That is definitely something I would recommend doing if you do decide to buy one of these JG Mac 10s, if you decide that is the replica for you and you wanna give it a go, I ran this as primary for about four games of Airsoft and I never had to change the battery guys. I still had four volts per cell left in this LiPo. Now I wasn't going heavy on the trigger so your use may vary if you do a lot more full auto than I do or a, you know you spam in semi a lot then you might find it doesn't last as long for you uh, but for me yeah it lasted absolutely fine and that goes hand in hand with the charger I showed you the other day of only charging with the balance lead because these AEP batteries, they, they only have a balance lead on them. So you need a charger that's capable of charging the balance charge on a LiPo through the balance lead. Um, the charger that comes with this NIMH is no good because that's a NIMH charger. So don't try and charge using the adapter on the charger that comes with a Mac 10. So there we go guys. Um, just a quick bit of information of the first upgrade, if you like, that I did to this Mac 10. It's not much of an upgrade guys, it doesn't take a lot to do it. If you want to do it the easy way, that is the easiest way of upgrading to LiPo on one of these. That will also work as I say for the TMMP7 and for the Scorpion. Any of those automatic electric pistol gearbox submachine guns or machine pistols, they will be able to use this TM adapter and one of those tiny little AEP LiPo batteries. What I will maybe do if I decide to use this for a whole day's gameplay is maybe buy a, a few of these little tiny LiPos and then as I say you don't need to have more than one of these adapters, you can if you want um, but then you just swap the battery out of the adapter, it's really easy all you have to do is push through that gap there and that pushes the battery out for you So there you go guys, I hope you found that interesting and I hope you found it useful I know it's very specific <laughs> and I hope you've enjoyed the video We'll get some more gameplay out uh, on Wednesday, as usual. I'll see if I can get a bit more out with me using the, the Mac 10 here and uh, see what you think of that. But like I said, guys, as always, thanks very much for supporting the channel. Really appreciate you guys watching. I hope you carry on enjoying what I'm putting out here. And uh, if you have been enjoying the channel but you haven't subscribed yet, then do get subscribed to the channel that your way you won't miss little bits and bats like this <laughs> if you want any more from myself you can find rock bottom airsoft on facebook and instagram i put pictures and things on there outside of the videos uh, little bits of updates on things i'm getting up to in airsoft and and that kind of thing and letting you know when i'm putting new videos out so with all that out of the way thank you very much for watching guys and i look forward to seeing you in the next one